Right, at the end of this section, unfortunately, you got me rather than some music, so just bear with me. Um, a lot of very interesting characters have passed through Hull down the years, and I've got interested in one or two of them. Um, one character who passed through Hull in the 19th century was William Cody, better known as Buffalo Bill, who brought this enormous, spectacular stage show called the Wild West Show <coughs> to Hull inside an enormous big top. It's hugely popular, and he recreated his version of the Wild West. We had cowboys lassoing horses, we had gunfights, we had wagon trains, and we had engines. Cody needed engines, and he picked upon members of the Sioux tribe, as they were known then, and Lakota now, because he thought, if I have people from different nations or tribes, they might, they might argue. So he favoured the Sioux. And then, a few years ago, I read this short passage on the internet about when he came here in the 19th century. Um, it was the last date in England, and then they were going to Europe the next day uh, by, by boat for another very long stage of the tour. And he lost four Indians. And um, they were arrested, didn't say why. They spent some nights in jail, and then they were released with no charge. And then they spent three to four weeks in Hull. And I thought, what did these Native Americans do in Hull for a month? You know, did people take them in? Did they go strolling in Pearson Park? Um, which pubs did they drink in? So I thought, there has to be a story here. So I've been, I've been working on this. I'll just read the, the opening of this, which is called Black Oh, sorry, I should mention, in case you know, Black Elk was one of them. He was a very young man then. And he went on to become very famous. Uh, a book was published called Black Elk Speaks, which has since been revered as a, a Native American spiritual classic. Um, he had these visions which, which were deemed to be very important. Um, but at this stage, he was a very young man. Tonight, May the 5th, 1888, the Battle of the Little Bighorn is being fought again in Hull, inside a big top on Corporation Field. With his first shot, Custer sends Black Elk tumbling from his horse to the ground. This is the last time he will die here in Britain. Tomorrow the cast will get a boat for, you, for, for Europe from Victoria Dock. And for the next three months, Black Elk will continue to die in France, the Netherlands, Germany, Austria, Spain, and in Italy. As he lies face down in the dirt, Images from the last eight months race through his mind. Singing his death songs and trying to comfort his horse during the terrifying storms they crossed the great water. The crew throwing dead elk and bison overboard when it finally ended. Meeting Grandmother England, the woman the English called the Queen, a tiny plump elder dressed in black. The crowds who filled the streets to cheer them in every city. But most of all, he remembers the vision he had on, this, on his first night in England. He was unconscious for three days afterwards. They said his skin burned as if it were on fire. When he finally awoke, he was weak as a baby and had to lay, lay in bed for another two days. Little Eagle had to die in his place on those nights. He was a proud brave who hated being the first to die and complained bitterly about it ever since. Black Elk came from a long line of holy men. Ever since his first vision as a boy, he was told what a great honour it was to be granted such a gift. But of late, he had come to fear he was not worthy, a weak man who could offer his people nothing. He had taken the job with Cody hoping to discover the secret of the white men's power on this journey and finally to be able to help his people. Was this new vision, his first for many years, the one that would finally allow him to lead the Sioux from their half-life on the reservation back to freedom? Soon, Cody would gallop into the arena on his white horse to save Custer in the nick of time. The Americans like me writing history. The crowd would cheer and throw their hats into the air. But Black, Black Elk liked Cody. He treated the Sioux well. On the journey across the Great Water, he'd sat with Black Elk and read from newspapers, held his finger under each word as he spoke, 
so that Black Elk learned some of the white man's language. I am pleased to meet you. My name is Black Elk. I like England. Mr. Cody is my good friend. In every city, they would put up the big tent in a park or on a common. The Sioux raised their teepees, and after the show would tether and feed their horses, make a campfire and eat. Some nights, Cody would leave his hotel and come and join them, bringing a rolled up blanket under his arm so he could sleep next to them under the stars. Black Elk often thought that Cody missed the old days just as much as the Sioux. Black Elk opened his eyes and saw Cody on his white horse in the wings, ready to gallop in and rescue Custer at the last moment. Black Elk took his first scalp in the Battle of the Little Bighorn when he was ten years old. The soldier kicked and screamed as he soared into his flesh. Soon he realised his knife wasn't sharp enough, but there was a revolver lying on the ground. He picked it up and shot the soldier in the head. Black Elk thought he'd taken a great part, part in a great victory that day, but in the end it only made the whites even more determined to destroy them. He got to his feet, brushed the dirt from his hands and threw his war bonnet to the ground. He walked out of the arena, ignoring the gaping front faces in the front row, pushing past Nate Salisbury, Cody's manager. Stepping outside, he felt the sharp wind from the Humber and looked up at the star-spattered sky. He searched for the eleven stars that made up the Council of Chiefs, who watched over their people from the sky. The same star as a Cody said, the whites called the Corona Borealis. There were no clouds and he saw them all, looking down on him. This was a good sign. Ahead lay a maze of streets, smoke billowing from the roofs. Black Elk began to walk towards them into Hull.